thought we'd take this opportunity to tell you a little about the Curiosity Show. In the show, we use a very direct approach, talking straight to camera. We have a one-to-one -one conversation with each child viewer. We're often framed rather like this so that we appear to them as we would if we were in their own home. Segments are pretty short. We range from about 30 seconds to 4 minutes and we have about 18 to the average program, which means that on any segment, if a child's not particularly interested, they know there's a very different segment following hard on its heels. You'll notice that we make extensive use of close-ups to highlight the things and activities in the program. Also, we frequently use over-the-shoulder camera angles so that viewers can see how to make things from the ideal point of view. We think Curiosity Show is appropriately named because we are capitalising on the child's natural curiosity. Young people want to know and understand the world around them and we are encouraging them to ask questions and showing them how to seek answers. It's the lesser panda or the red panda and like its Chinese cousin, it's a bamboo eater. And here in Taronga Park it's being fed lots of other fruit and vegetable matter as well. There's a bit of a mystery about pandas. No one quite knows where they fit in the zoological world, what animals they're related to. A long time ago, they were thought to be related most closely to the bears, and I suppose that's why the name panda bear hangs on. And then there was a revision of thought, and people thought, no, they're most closely related to the raccoons. And just recently, people have said, no, perhaps it's the bears after all. It's all based upon structures inside the skull and the bones of the wrist and the way they use their wrists when they eat. But none of that needs to worry us, although uh, it's tempting when you look at the face of one of these little pandas and the face of a raccoon to see quite a lot of resemblance there in both the form and the marking. Remember the problem? We have to change that window so that it's still a metre wide, it's still a square, but it allows only half the amount of light through. Well, here's what those ancient builders did. They got some bricks and mortar and blocked in the bottom corners of the window, and then more bricks and mortar and blocked in the top corners of the window, and you'll see that it is still a metre wide, and if you tip your head on the side, you'll see that it's still a square. Right, now what I want you to do is to look at that central dot. Don't take your eyes away. And you're gonna see a number of interesting things. First of all, the spiral seems to be racing in towards the center. Of course it's not, it's just an illusion that the line is doing that. The other thing you'll notice as you stare at it is the spiral seems to get colored edges. That's a peculiar phenomenon and it takes a lot of explaining, but it's a, it's a trick that the spiral plays on your eyes. The thing I really want you to see is what happens when we turn the spiral off because while you're watching that spiral apparently racing towards the center, it's giving your brain and your eyes certain messages. So when we turn it off and you look at me, my face is going to appear to expand. It'll look as if the camera's coming in on me. I promise you it's not going to, but you will see me growing bigger in your screen. You ready? Three, two, one, zero. And I appear to be growing in the middle of your screen. Look at the walls or the furniture and you'll probably see that they appear to be growing too. A very odd trick that spirals play in your eyes. In fact, all round, spirals are very peculiar things. It consists of a curved wooden stick with more than 20 pieces of coconut shell loosely attached to it. What is it? If you said it's a rattle, you're on the right track. It's actually a shark rattle from the Solomon Islands and it's used to attract sharks. Here's how it works. It's shaken not above the water, but below the surface. And although you and I can't hear much, right now it's sending out vibrations which sharks are hearing and they're attracted to those vibrations and they come over to see what's happening. This one's actually been tested and found to work. That's why I'm leaving. The Curiosity Show has a strong emphasis on science, technology and natural history. We're helping young people find out why things happen, how things work and what makes the world the way it is. There's also a strong emphasis on craft and every show has things that you can make and do, toys and models. And you make them out of things found around the home, 
rubber bands, rulers, pens, thumbtacks, things like that. We also include puzzles, tricks and problems. Sometimes we provide answers, other times we deliberately leave the problems unanswered so that there's a challenge for every viewer. And Curiosity Show has a worldwide perspective. Each program has a balance between studio and location material and we choose topics because they are fascinating to us, because of their universal appeal. We hope you share this enthusiasm for ideas.